How are you doing, folks? Well, today I want to separate the engine and gearbox from each other, and I want to try and remove the front bumper from this MGB behind me and continue on with the cleaning process. I know we've done a lot on cleaning already, but the thing about it is, is that there is a huge amount involved in cleaning this, uh, this whole project. So uh, I, have a, uh, I have a new chemical that I'm going to try, and we're going to see how it works. <laughs> Okay, so I bought this product, uh, Tank Clean SP10, from Liquid Technology Limited down in Wexford in Ireland. Uh, LTL.ie is the website. I'm not endorsed by them or anything, uh, but I just found the owner very helpful. Uh, I uh, was speaking to him to a great extent on the phone. So I bought this stuff off him and I bought some black epoxy paint as well. So let's see how it works. I've, I've actually hosed everything down inside in the engine bay here now. So with any luck, that should take all the gunge and gack and filth and grime and miasma off the inside of the engine bay and uh, leave us with a nice clean engine bay. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to leave that soak and I'm going to get on to separating out the engine and gearbox over here. So what we need to do is uh, we need to start removing bolts. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lift up the uh, engine and gearbox assembly. Now you'll see... I have a uh, screwdriver in the chain there to stop the chain from slipping back like what happened to me when I was actually uh, removing the engine because I do not want to repeat that incident. So I just really want to take a little bit of weight here. Make sure the chain is not snagged on a stud because I don't want to break the stud. All right. Oh, we're missing a pin on the, uh, <laughs> the engine hoist. I was wondering what was going on there. Let's just let that off. One of the legs is inclined to fold up there. Okay, that's better. Just goes to show you need to check these things before you start, uh, start in on uh, the job. So, let's, uh... now we're in business. Okay, now I'm not going to lift it very high. I literally just want to lift it high enough so that I can... Uh, get the engine, uh, the engine, the gearbox bolts out. And I'm gonna get my impact gun organized here because there's not gonna be any messing about here. And we'll start wanging bolts out. One of the things I really like about this new camera, the DJI Pocket 2, is that the wireless microphone has a record button on it. So it means I don't need to go near the camera when I want to start recording. Uh, anyway, this is just a little aside for you. So they're 916 bolts, so we're going to just start banging them out. And hopefully it will all come good for us quite easily. So get the start motor out of our way first of all. Beast of a start motor this is. A lot of stuff in these cars very, very agricultural. It's kind of one of the things I actually like about them though, to be honest with you. It's not a, definitely not a criticism on my part. So I'm gonna put them, put that back in there. Well, no, there's no point in putting it back in the hole. Actually, I can put that one back in the hole because that's actually just treaded onto the plate that goes between the engine and gearbox. But the other one actually goes goes through the bell housing. Okay, now I have a new, uh, have a new clutch kit ordered for this. And the starting motor looks in very good condition teeth are all in good condition and everything so that may have been replaced at some point in the past so happy days uh, I'll uh, have a quick glance at it and make sure that everything is as it should be but hopefully it'll be one part I don't need to go replacing a nut down here it's not a 916 nut though so I'll come back to that get a uh, see now I see what I'm after doing here to myself I now have a uh, one of the 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 bolts that actually are holding the gearbox uh, or the, the chain onto the engine that I'm lifting is actually the engine to gearbox bolt. So, although, no, no, hold on a second. I don't need to take those ones out at all. That, that plate actually stays on the engine. I'm going wrong here already. So that goes back in there. So yeah, there's, there's bolts going around the actual bell housing. So I'm gonna just focus on them instead. Now they are definitely not 916, they look more like a 716 bolt, so. Or the 716 nut. No, the bolts are right. And they're not 716 either, they're half. 716 is a common size on a 
aircraft, but it's not a particularly common size on cars from what I can tell. Not as common anyway. There's nut there. Nut there. Okay, I need a spanner. Gak. Some sort of a little bracket that goes in the bottom of the engine and I'm not entirely sure what it's for. Oh, I know what that's for. That's the, the bar that went over to the rear cross member. Uh, there's like a, a rod that goes underneath the gearbox and that's what it attaches to on the other end. Well, it definitely needs to be cleaned up, I can assure you. All right, so like everything else on this engine, I suppose. Okay, so we have a bolt there. We have a bolt there and a bolt here, so we'll take this one out next. A lot of people were saying that it's a much easier t task removing the gearbox and engine assembly as one unit and splitting the engine gearbox when it's out of the car. I can kind of see why in a way, but there again, I'm having to support it on the engine crane, whereas I wouldn't have to do that if it wasn't for the fact that it's removed from, from the uh, car. I suppose it depends on what, how, what your propensity is for crawling around on the ground under the car. Some of them have spring washers and others don't. I'm going to guess somebody's been in here before and didn't bother putting all the washers back on. Okay, I have a, I have a new clutch slave cylinder organized for this gearbox as well. I'm not going to take it off yet. I don't need to. I was just checking to make sure it doesn't need to come off in order to take the engine off uh, the gearbox. But no, I think we're, we're pretty good at that. So it's just literally the one bolt holding it in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually lower the whole assembly onto the ground and I'm going to try and pull the engine off the gearbox. And hopefully it won't fight me too much. It will, of course, fight me, but I'm hoping it won't. Wishful thinking at its best. Okay, so last, uh, last nut and bolt to come out of the bell housing and then it's definitely coming free anyway, as you can possibly see. Get out. Lift, lift the engine a little bit. There we go. Just wanted to get it, uh, get it balanced because the gearbox was pulling on the engine and that bolt was just stuck in the hole. Okay, so now we should be able to just pull the engine off the gearbox or pull the gearbox off the engine, one or the other. It's definitely free anyway. I mean, you can see there's a, there's a gap opening up. Hey! That wasn't too bad, a big an ordeal, was it? God, the clutch is looking in very good order, to be honest. Well, the, the, what's in the bell housing, I mean, the, the clutch, I don't know what the clutch plate looks like yet, but as I said, I have a new one. Um, I'll put the new one on, and then what I can do is, if necessary, I can, uh, I can use the old one as a, a spare. It's always good to have spare clutches and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get the engine out of the way. I am actually going to get a... Um, there's another company who's going to do the clutch for or uh, clean the engine for me uh, the people who are doing the cylinder head because i cannot be arsed trying to clean that mess you know i really can't the water pump has to come off the uh, i'm going to take the oil filter off now um the water pump is going to have to come off because of a new one i'm going to have a new timing chain for it as well so yeah, now I'm not going to go and do any of that sort of stuff today to tell you the truth. The main focus today is really just to get that gearbox cleaned up and assess it and then just try and clean the engine bay a little bit better because, uh, yeah, uh, damn. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. All right, so let's see. Now, what I did do today is actually, I know my little Ryobi pressure washer, the battery operated pressure washer is a good yoke for certain applications, but... Today I actually have a plug-in pressure washer. It's not actually that much 
better than the Ryobi one. It's a bit of it's a piece of crap, but um, it's uh, it, it can run off the mains water supply. Now, in this instance, I don't want to uh, I don't want to to put a screwdriver through the chain because I actually want the engine to find its equilibrium. To a certain degree, anyway. Pump, 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 pump it up. Anyone guess I'm an old school dance fan? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put, just put them aside, all the bolts aside for the moment. We're gonna get our engine out of the way. See how heavy this gearbox is, and if I'm moving it myself, what, what are they? What are the bets? I'm reasonably strong, but I don't also don't want to put my put my back out. Wow! It is not nearly as heavy as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> That's remarkable. So all the engine, all, I know it's a big lump of a cast iron uh, tractor engine, but. Still and all, I mean, it's, I, I, did, I did expect it to be a bit of weight in the gearbox, especially the way it was hanging down on the arse when I was trying to remove it. But I can easily lift that. Okay, great. So that's, uh, that makes life easier. So let's get our wiring out of the way. Uh, that is not going to be staying on. There's a little P-clip there I need to remove. And there's a bonding lead there. And then the plan is basically stand it up on its end, scrape all the guns off it with a scraper, and then pressure wash it. I'm gonna spray, spray on that uh, tank clean stuff that I showed you. And we're gonna go from there. Tell you now, some of these uh, engine or gearbox mounts have definitely had it. There's one of them is pretty much in two pieces. So it'll be getting replaced anyway. I have new ones there for it. I actually ordered a load of stuff. Uh, supplier I'm using for most of the stuff actually uh, the last while is Just MGs up in Northern Ireland. Lawrence Brush is the guy's name, and I have to say I find him so helpful, uh, full of information. He hasn't so steered me wrong so far. So again, you know, I'm not, uh, he's not giving me any uh, discounts or anything like that. I'm paying full price for everything. But it's, uh, you know, he, he, I, definitely, uh, I definitely recommend him. There's a gearbox breather here on uh, this side of the gearbox, which uh, I need to blank up because I don't want to get any uh, water into the gearbox. Right, let's see if this tank clean stuff is any good. Get a bit of pressure up on the pressure washer first. Well, when you consider the amount of gunge that's on this uh, gearbox, I don't think it did a bad job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it again. It's typical it started bloody raining anyway. But uh, I'm gonna spray it again and I'm gonna clean it with a dish, wash, uh, a dish brush and we're gonna go from there. But I'm gonna get you guys inside because this camera is not waterproof. Okay, so satisfying and all as the, uh, the end result is, the cleaning process is starting to wear thin to be honest with you. And I know there is still so much left to do. You know, I need to try and figure out a way of cleaning parts on this uh, this car an awful lot better you know would it have really killed the previous owner to have maybe pressure washed it once in its lifetime anyway let's have a look i have to say that uh tank clean stuff is actually excellent it really does a good job but um it's not uh, a certain amount of elbow grease is definitely necessary as well you know i mean it's not a one one stop solution you know i was kind of almost hoping that i could have just sprayed it on and rinsed it off and it would have come up like that but no um a huge amount of the hard work was done by a wire wheel on a drill so you can imagine how long that took so anyway look at uh 
I think uh, I think it's good enough. I, I don't need to go any further than this. I mean, for Jay's sake, it's going to be underneath the car. So, yeah, now I need to rinse the uh, rinse the engine bay and uh, get that all sorted out. Okay, so I need to I need to swab down the engine bay now before I go any further. So the next thing to do really is I have a bucket of uh, a bucket of water and a cloth because I did have a uh, I did have a big bucket that I could have kind of drained all the water from the pressure washer in pressure washer into. In actual fact, it wasn't mine. It belonged to somebody else in the shed and they've taken it with them. How dare they? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I, need to, I need to do something just by way of rinsing the engine bay here. Hopefully, after having left the stuff sitting on for so long, it's, got, it's a good hour it's been on now, it will be, um, it, the, the dirt should just walk off. At least that's the hope. I doubt it will, but sure, look. Wishful thinking and all that. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let's continue on. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a... Jeez, it's windy out there. I'm going to start off with a Scotch Bright, and then I'm going to go down to a... Uh, literally a wet cloth. So, the dirt's definitely shifting, all right. Plenty of water. Realistically, pressure washing is the only job. I'm going to have to get a... Con a suitable container that I can drain water into. As was promised by the gentleman from Liquid Technologies Limited, the dirt is definitely coming off. Uh, but, see the problem is, is the fact that I, I severely dropped the ball when I took the, fr the front subframe off and I and I did because the problem now is the fact that I can't take it out to pressure wash it. I need to, I need to be able to get it, get this whole engine bay properly steam cleaned. Honestly, I've been half thinking about putting the uh, front subframe back on just so I can roll it outside and do that. You know, folks, I am acutely aware of the fact that I'd say at this stage. It's probably getting boring for you guys to watch me cleaning this car, but uh, the, the good news is, is the fact that I got pictures today of my Beetle, which has gone into paint at long bloody last. So finally we've got some colour on the panels. So hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll be in a position to make a start in that project. And that won't involve cleaning. That one involved reassembling. Because although he's putting some of the stuff together, I'm getting him to put the glass back in, the headliner on. I want to do most of it myself. A, because I know what I'm at, more than he does, and with all due respect to him. And B, uh, I'd want it done this year. So, you know, I mean, otherwise it'll end up just sitting there and I'll never get the bloody thing back. This has just been a great big pain in the ass, to be honest with you. I am fed up with cleaning. I really am. <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with any more of it, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that I need to get the bloody thing pressure washed. And I'm going to get a big tray and I'm going to put it underneath. And I'm, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to just try and pressure wash it. At least the gearbox is done. So that's something. The engine, I'm going to bring it into um, the place he's doing my cylinder head is Dan Daly Engines in Dunshockland, and they are, uh, they, they'll have my cylinder head this week, so the engine will go into them, and they're going to steam clean it, thanks be to Jesus, because I do not want to have to clean the engine as well, I'm, as I said, just fed up. So I want to get it to the point where I'm start, starting to kind of put stuff back together again. Anyway, look, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, state of play with some of the sub-assemblies. And we're going to have a look at putting the pedal box together and the heater box together because I have them all cleaned and I have them painted. And uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a big positive. So we may as well move ahead with that. This, uh, I just don't have the inclination for it. You know, it's just pissing me off. Okay, right, look, we'll come back in a little while. It is starting to look cleaner anyway. I mean, that's, that's kind of how we are now at the moment. And I have some black epoxy mastic paint that I'm going to brush onto the chassis legs down the bottom there and uh, along the 
scuttle down there where the heater box and pedal box and everything are going to go uh, i will probably paint it purple again afterwards but for the moment anyway the black mat the black epoxy will provide a good level of protection and uh, stop any uh, further corrosion because thankfully i'm not finding any rust but uh, it can't obviously stay the way it is so yeah anyway well we're not in kansas anymore toto Yes, we're back in my home garage, so that basically means that I'm away from the filthy MG and looking at some of the slightly cleaner stuff and uh, starting to assess that. I have made a decision on what I'm going to do with the, uh, with the car itself. The next thing to do a full restoration on is the front subframe. Now, the front subframe, I'm basically I'm going to do a full job on it, bushings, ball joints, bearings, the whole lot and get it all basically fully restored and ready to refit to the car and because of the, f the reason I'm doing that next is so that, so that I can refit it and get the car back on its wheels and once I have it back on its wheels it means I can bring it outdoors and I can pressure wash everything and I'm going to basically hire a steam cleaner and get uh, get it all sorted out because to be honest with you the gack is really bringing me down you know i mean i just feel like i'm accomplishing nothing because i'm just wading through it the gearbox turned out all right in the end now I, what i will do is i will uh, flush the gearbox oil through and all that and just uh, check all the electrical connections on it and make sure that everything is as it should be and uh, yeah hopefully the gearbox will be okay i mean i understand that the gearbox was giving no trouble when it was when the car was taken off the road so i'm hoping that that's still the case but a gearbox oil change would be a sensible thing to do so anyway uh, next thing to look at is the pedal box so as you can see I now have a new clutch slave cylinder installed the pin isn't gone through yet because I will actually have to take the pedals off in order to, to refit the um, to refit the whole assembly to the car but you can see it's all been painted up I have a new clutch slave cylinder fitted I have a brake master cylinder uh, sorry that's a clutch master cylinder I have a brake master cylinder to fit to it as well and once they're fitted then I will be able to uh, reinstall it in the car. I mean I can install it in the car before doing that but what's the point? I even have the pedal rubbers and all that as well there that need to be refitted so uh, yeah but as you can see it turned out pretty well. I was able to press the bushings out of the uh, pedals the the bushings were actually seized in uh, and uh, so what I did was actually press them out and uh, cleaned everything up and they were still serviceable so I was able to refit them so happy days I mean that was that done so uh, saved me a bit of uh, a bit of bother and uh, yeah so pedal box next time you see it we'll be fitting into the car but you can see this is the kind of the standard we're working to here you know so I think that's pretty good what do you think um yeah um as I said, the brake master cylinder is still with the car. I thought I'd brought it down. I think I'd left it in the van and then I ended up leaving the van up there. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. Next thing to do is to have a look at the heater box. Well, folks, isn't that a sight to behold? It really came up well, I have to say. It's just, uh, needs to be straightened out. There was a little bit of repair work that needed to be done on, on this side here. That was, uh, there was some corrosion just basically it had uh, gotten pitted and there was a few small holes so a skim of epoxy filler there sorted that out you know it's not a structural part it, a bit of filler is all right here you know i mean i'm happy enough with that so that's absolutely fine now and um you can see inside is the same deal no messing about here you know so that's that's that done I know the purists are going to say that it's not supposed to be gloss, it's supposed to be matte, but uh, I think it looks better gloss, so uh, it's my car, and uh, it's my car, and I'll do what I want, or something to that effect. So this is the, yeah, the light above me did just go out, so I need to change the tube, there we go. Um, there is the heater matrix, now uh, it looks a little bit scabby in places, but it doesn't leak, and I have flushed it, so I'm happy enough with it. So look at it's it's gonna be buried inside in the, in the inside in the heater box, and it's gonna be wrapped up in foam. So I have a new foam kit for this. So uh, what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna just blank up those holes because I have a funny feeling that what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna get showered with uh, the remains of the water that's still inside in it because you know yourself you can never get all of the stuff out, and uh, I don't want that to happen to me. To me. 
Okay, so the heater, bro heater box rebuild kit that I bought is basically just a whole load of bits of foam and uh, there's a couple of grommets and stuff like that there as well. So uh, the grommets go in the holes for the uh, the pipe outlets. So we will uh, we'll take off the bits of uh, the bits of rubber glove off the things before we put that in because it won't fit through the grommets. So yeah, anyway, right. What I need to do is I need to. I was I was kind of hoping that this would have come pre-prepared with spray spray adhesive already applied, but it doesn't. So I need to apply my own spray adhesive. So I'm gonna go and get some. All right, I I, I got some. Uh, uh, g Granville uh, spray adhesive, so uh, yeah, that'll do the trick, I hope. So, I've given it a good shake. Oh, great, it comes out of the canvas next thing because I was expecting it just been, would have been just stuffed up. I'm gonna apply a liberal coat of this. I fully expect I'm gonna to have to trim this off afterwards. So anyway, right, that's that's that done. So let's get our heater matrix here. And slap this on. Okay, so that just literally goes across there. High tech it is not. Okay, so I don't need to I don't need to trim any off. In actual fact, if anything I have to stretch it slightly. That's alright. Okay, so that's the foam on. Lovely. Simple as that. Okay, right, so foam is now on the heater matrix. Leave that to I'm just gonna put that aside. I'll uh, leave it standing on the end so just keep the keep the phone in place. There we go. That's not going anywhere. So now, the next thing we need to do is there is a foam donut that goes on the fan inlet on this side here. Now, some kits come with a, a doodly firkins a, a, a screen, a new screen. Unfortunately, this is not one of those kits. But not not to worry. We'll. Uh, We'll be able to use the old one again. Or not. I thought I had kept the piece of uh, for, uh, uh, the screen that goes on it. Apparently I didn't. It wasn't my brightest move. Anyway, um, I'll figure something out at some point. Maybe I might be able to get something before I actually install it and then I'll put it on then. So anyway, I, I still want to install this and uh, I can install the screen from the other side then, if needs be. All right, there we go. So that's that on, which is nice. So put that aside and I'm gonna flip that over and the weight of the box there will just keep everything in place. So now I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the actual heater matrix in. So that'll go in here. Uh, it would help if you put it in the right way. This way. I'll come back to you in a second. Yeah, no, it was going right. It was just a case where I uh, had to make sure that make sure that I was basically. And you have to compress the foam. So that literally just slots in there. As I explained to you already, high tech it is not. But it works, and as I said to you before, folks, it's one of the things I like about this car. If it works, it's good enough. Well, I mean, in saying that, 
there are there are several things that I think are really really well engineered on this. So okay, so that's uh, so that's that. So next thing we can do is we can put on our front cover uh, with once we install the grommets. I just want to make sure that it kind of goes into position generally. Yeah, it should be all right. Okay, so grommet one. The grommets just go into these holes here. That's one. And there's the other one. See, the reason I threw out the inlet screen was because I looked at pictures of the rebuilt kits online and I saw that it comes with an inlet, inlet screen and then the version I got didn't. So obviously there's different types. Some have it, some have it and some don't. It's not the end of the world. In the grand scheme of things, if that's the worst of the setbacks I get with this restoration, then I can live with it. So now, next thing to do is I need to give these lads a little clean. I haven't done that yet. And once I've given, given them a clean, I'll be able to install them. They're basically the bail clips that just hold on the hold on the, the or hold the heater box together. So we'll come back to you now in a minute. Okay. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry on the little uh, clips, I will just uh, refit the um, or fit the, the piece of trim that goes along there. It's another piece of uh, kind of foam rubber that goes along there. So little squirt of uh, stuff. See I told you a bit of rusty water would pour out of it. I mean I flushed it about a hundred times and it's still uh, still pouring out of it. But look at you can expect that. If I'd been left sitting up since 1991 without ever been uh, driven I'd imagine a bit of rusty water would pour out of me too, so I think we'll allow the car that. Now, so that's that piece on there. And there's another piece that goes there, so we'll just spray that. I have two more pieces of uh, foam to go on. One of them, I'm not exactly sure where it goes, so I'll have to try and find out. You feckin' idiot, you. God almighty. I see a piece of foam, I want to paint it black. No colours anymore. Fucking that's what happens when you put your can side by side. Anyway. Another piece there. piece for the other side as well so so this time I don't think I'll spray paint it black I think I will put some adhesive on let's let that go a bit tackier than that Realistically, you're supposed to wait until the foam, uh, until the adhesive goes tacky before you try and use it, but ain't nobody got time for that. Kind of want to get inside soon enough. So, um, yeah, I think the, the fourth piece of foam, uh, this piece here literally just goes along the other side and it's basically just to seal everything up. So, yeah, where exactly it goes, though, I'm not 100% sure, so I don't just go and slap it on anywhere. 
There we go. Okay, so that's that all done. So let's have a look and see how our uh, paint is coming along. Okay, so the adhesive, or sorry, the paint is drying on the uh, the other uh, pieces there. Uh, so while that's drying, uh, I had to paint the other side, so that's why we uh, I had uh, I still have to wait. Uh, while that's happening, I am going to lubricate the control cable that actually goes from the control knob, and um, I'm literally just going to spray some grease down it, and I'm going to leave it leave it to hang up, and uh, let the let the oil run down it. So uh, yeah, a little bit of light machine oil down there, that should do the trick nicely. All right, so these are uh, dry enough, and uh, they literally just all they do is you just clip them on, and that holds the whole heater box together. See what I mean about them not overcomplicating things, and it absolutely it, it absolutely works fine. Alright, that's not looking too bad now, is it? The next thing to do is we need to fit the... There's a kind of a flap thing that goes here, uh, which is what the control cable actually goes onto. So, we'll get ourselves set up and install that. You know what? There was a bead of sealant around this before when I, when I took it out so I'm going to actually put a bead of sealant around it again afterwards. There's no harm in it. So. Yeah. Okay, so bead of sealant applied successfully. Four screws holding that on. I have a sneaking suspicion I've installed that the wrong way around, you know that? I have. Ah, oh, yeah. Now, the fan motor works, I know that, I tested it. But what I haven't done is I haven't cleaned it and I haven't uh, greased the bearings or anything like that on it. So I'm going to do that off camera and uh, reinstall it at a later stage. But uh, so I won't be actually installing the fan in this video. But basically everything else will be done and dusted. So that goes like this. It has to really, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway. So there we go, so that's the flap installed. So the, it came with this rubber block, and the rubber, blo rubber block is supposed to go in onto the bodywork, I suppose. Yeah, so it goes up like that. And then the cable comes through there. So that basically creates your uh, seal between the heater box and the body. And then there's two ducts to go in there and there, and that's basically it. So yeah, uh, but we don't install that just yet. So because um, yeah, I think that actually goes in on the body before you put the heater box in. I'll figure that out when it comes time to actually figure it out. But uh, there's our fan motor. It's turning free, absolutely no problems. I know it works as I said. I've had it working. So really, it's just a case now of cleaning it, lubricating it, and 
reinstalling it. So that's always a nice handy number when you find something like that working. There ladies and gentlemen is our completed heater box. And that's the side of it you'll actually see in the engine bay. So you'll have your fan motor there, the hose is going onto it. And that's basically it. So I'm going to leave it there for this video folks. I think I've done enough and as I said the next uh, the next video on the MG should hopefully see me stripping down and assessing the front subframe and uh, there is also another little surprise up my sleeve. So uh, yeah, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will chat to you in a future video. Talk to you soon. I'm not going to tell you much about it beyond the fact that it has twin Weber 40 IDFs on it. Oh, I can't wait to get this beast out on the road.